Welcome back to Jersey Matters, a bill that would allow dreamers in New Jersey to get financial aid for college is close to reality, and here's a man that's been fighting for that for a long time. Frank Argoti Freyer is the board chair of the Latino Action Network Foundation. He's also a professor at Kane University. Uh, La Latino history, right? And yes, I'm a Latin American historian. Let's talk about this bill. Sure. What would it do exactly? What, what, what's the big change? So it's the, this is the culmination of a 15-year struggle. I like to say I was uh, had dark hair and 30 pounds lighter when we began. Um, the first part of it was to get in-state tuition for the Dreamers, and that was achieved in uh, 2013. This allows Dreamers uh, to qualify for financial aid, whether it's need-based or merit-based. These type of bills always have their critics, and, and the and the critics are saying that if you're not in this country legally, you shouldn't be getting financial aid. What do you say to them? So, you know, our immigration system has been broken for so long. We're in 20 years now of an inability in Congress to deal with it. These children were brought over at a young age, and the bill is very specific as to whom qualifies. You have to have been uh, educated in New Jersey, graduated from a New Jersey high school, or have attended a certain number of years. So I think a lot of the anger about these things often comes from this notion that these are not our children, but they are our children. They've been uh, through our New Jersey schools for many years. And so I think that's where a lot of that anger, I think if we start to think of them as our children, people who are going to stay in our state and our nation and going to be productive citizens, I think there's both a morally, uh, there's a moral argument and an economic argument for this bill. The, the interesting part about what you just said is that they've, they've been going through the education system for a long time, so they've been getting state funding for all of this time, and it seems uh, almost counterproductive when you get to a certain point to say, no, now you, now you don't get any. Exactly right. I mean, we estimate that each child that's been educated, you know, from K through, uh, you know, senior in high school, we spend in New Jersey $200,000 or so on that child. So then to stop investing in them when they reach, uh, you know, first year of college seems counterproductive. And I might add that um, you only get this financial aid if you qualify for it. That is, if you're financially needy or if you have outstanding grades, which are the typical criteria for receiving college aid. It is interesting in the national debate, and I'm sure in the state debate too, the dreamers are, are a separate entity from those who are here undocumented or illegal, depending on what term you <laughs> use and which side of the issue you're right, on. Right, right, of course. And so um, they've always been separate. And, and which, is, which is fascinating to me. And I think the Dreamers uh, have support of most of the country and most of the people in New Jersey. Do you separate the two? Uh, I mean, I see them as one community. But as someone who works to uh, push legislation that helps our communities, um, I see an opportunity here to pass this legislation. So we worked very hard to do it. But I do think that ultimately the answer lies in comprehensive immigration reform in Washington. This is something that will help folks. It will help, you know, 600 to 1,000 students a year for the foreseeable future. And I think that's going to make a very substantive change in their lives. But the truth is that this puzzle, this immigration puzzle, needs to be um, solved at the national level, and this is just a small step here in New Jersey. Let's talk about the national level mm -hmm. for one second, because it, it is fascinating what's been happening at the national level. Do you feel like the Dreamers have been used as a, a political pawn it, 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 by both sides? Um, well, I think that um, to equate Trump and the other side equally, I think, would be um, unfair. Um, I think Trump has used them uh, uh, here by suspending the program that uh, the DACA program that protects them and then saying, hey, Congress, you have to solve this. And then, you know, going through the artifice of saying he cares about them, but then saying he won't renew the program unless he gets funding for his wall, which as a historian, I can tell you walls don't historically work. And you know, we could do, talk about that or... I'm no, 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 I, I, I want to stay with, with, the, with DACA because it's interesting that you say that because the, the other side of the argument is that 
he was willing to sign a bill on DACA. He wanted a DACA bill to come to his desk. That's what he says. That's what Republicans say. And that Congress failed, and he blames Democrats in Congress. And you hear from conservatives that Democrats don't want to solve this problem because they like it as an issue. Yeah, so I think if you look at the national debate, what he uh, wanted to insert into the bill continues his insulting, stigmatizing campaign against immigrants. Remember, when he announced his candidacy, he said, you know, he basically labeled uh, many Mexicans as criminals and rapists, so insulting, so demeaning for the community. And so then, when it came to negotiate this DACA bill, he wanted to end what he called chain migration, which is, and this diversity lottery, right? So that meaning that if you have family like these dreamers and they wanted to bring their parents in, legalize their status, they would have a harder time to do that. So he inserted things into this DACA bill that he knew would be unacceptable. So I think that's uh, you know a game that one can play if you don't if you're not armed with facts. But when you start looking at the negotiations, that's what broke it down. Everybody, at least on the Democratic side, was agreeable to a clean DACA bill. But he wanted funding, as I say, for the wall, and he wanted to end what he calls chain migration, which he stigmatized. And then he wanted to end the diversity lottery. So he inserted a lot of poison pills in that potion. I know you were here to talk about the, the Dreamers and the Finance for Colleges, which we did deal with, but thanks for getting into the yeah, national argument as well. I really appreciate it. Thanks Pleasure. for coming in. Congratulations. It sounds like a certainty that the governor is going to sign this. We're so. eager. You know, we've been in contact with the governor, and he has in, indicated that he will sign it. Frank Argodi Freyer, board chair of the Latino Action Network Foundation. Jersey Matters continues right after this. When we come back, did Americans actually eat healthier back in the 18th century? Dawn takes us back in time to find out.